my parents sat me down. They were like, this is how we're going to make it work. I'm going to try not to cry, but they basically were like, we're going to empty our savings. You're going to take out a lot of loans. And afterwards, my dad said, this is what I love to watch you do the most. Hi, I'm Melissa Fumero, and today I'm unfiltered. I'm taking off all my makeup and answering some questions. If someone was meeting me for the first time, I would describe myself as cheery, nice, and hopefully funny, but it really depends on the day. I have a lot of practice. <laughs> so I'm originally from New Jersey, Northeast New Jersey, about 13 miles outside of Manhattan. My parents are Cuban. I was born here. We moved to this town called Lyndhurst when I was six. And Lyndhurst at the time was mostly Italian and Irish, but a lot of kids I grew up with had immigrant parents. I didn't, I never felt weird that my parents had really thick accents because so many of the houses I went into, someone had an accent. And there were like a lot of racial jokes and kidding around growing up, but pretty much everyone got like a little piece of it and some groups got it worse than others. What are you gonna dance to? Step by step. And who sings that? You take on the block. In that town, there was a dance and theater school. When I found that place, I was about, um, I think, 10 or 11. And it was right after I saw my first Broadway show. And that was like, oh, I found my home. Like, I found the place that I feel the most myself. And I don't have to worry about what I'm saying or what I look like, and that was really like a haven for me. I understand Spanish pretty fluently, but when we were littler and my when my brother started elementary school, the teacher called my parents in and asked them what they were speaking at home, and they said Spanish. And she was like, mm, it's really messing him up at school. And so my parents got scared and you know, especially I think being immigrants, they were like the whole reason we've been through everything we've been through is so that our kids could do better than us and succeed here. So they didn't stop speaking Spanish at home, but they definitely stopped forcing us to speak Spanish. But I don't really speak Spanish with anyone outside of my family because I'm really insecure about it. I feel like immigrant parents sometimes fall into like two groups, like, there's the parents that are like, you are going to be a doctor or a lawyer and make a lot of money. And then there's the immigrant parents that are like, I want you to be successful and happy and healthy, but I don't care what you do because the reason we went through all of this is so that you could have freedom to do whatever you want. And I had those parents, especially escaping from Cuba, that like makes sense, <laughs> where all their freedoms were stripped away and they were like, we came here so you could be free, free to do whatever you want, but also don't like totally mess up your life. Every year I would want to take dance classes or acting classes and every year it was sitting down at the table with my dad and him saying, this is how many classes you have you can take. You have to choose. And then like me bring and be like, yeah, I'm ready to do what, but And then I don't think it was until I got the acceptance letter to NYU that my parents were like, maybe, maybe she's really good. Maybe, maybe she can do this. They were just really excited and really proud. And I remember when I got the acceptance letter, I was like, it's okay, I know we can't afford it. It's enough for me to know that I got in. And then again, my parents sat me down. They were like, this is how we're gonna make it work. I'm gonna try not to cry, but they basically were like, we're gonna empty our savings. You're gonna take out a lot of loans. I had like little scholarships that I got from NYU and you're gonna live at home. Then I remember towards the end of NYU, I did a play in a theater festival in New York um, and my parents came to see it. And afterwards, my dad said, this is what I love to watch you do the most. I love to watch you act more than anything. I'm pretty sure I cried because I don't think he had ever like super articulated it. And I was like, oh, they like really have my back in this. Yeah, so I got, I got lucky there. River. So I, I, I booked my first job, which was a soap opera, One Life to Live. 
four hours after my last exam of college, which was um, insane. It was insane that I got the call that day. That job completely changed my life. I, first of all, was working right away, which was something I didn't expect. I don't want her apology. I was doing this really dramatic acting gig, which I also didn't expect. Um, and I paid off my student loans um, pretty quickly, which I did not expect. And then I met my future husband, like two years into the gig, which I really didn't expect. It was just this speeding train that I felt like I just jumped on and held on as best I could until my contract was up. I sat through a whole play once, so I can get through anything. I took you to that play and you said you loved it. Because I did. Brooklyn Nine-Nine was just like another audition and then I had a callback and I remember the callback was like right around the holidays and then nothing. Got a call in like January, February, you're screen testing for that Andy Samberg pilot. And I was like, oh my gosh, amazing. I went into it like, there's no way this is happening. <laughs> It was like five days later, I think, that I got the call that I had booked it. I just collapsed on the floor crying, and then immediately after was terrified because then it meant I had to actually do the thing and like try to pull it off. Yeah. My husband and I kept having the baby talk. Should we try, should we go for it? And we kept putting it off like year after year. And then it felt like the universe was just like, oh my God, if you guys don't like get pushed to do this, you're never gonna do it. So we got a surprise pregnancy <laughs> that weirdly timed out brilliantly where my due date was two weeks after we were supposed to wrap Brooklyn Nine-Nine. So we felt like, okay, this is meant to be, this feels very serendipitous. Um, and we were, after we got over our initial shock, we were very, very excited. Working pregnant was not my fave. I have a baby that's kicking me in the ribs while I'm trying to say my lines, while I'm playing this like crazy character who's pretending she's pregnant, because at this point I was so huge, they were like, we have to figure out a way to like write this in without her being pregnant, so my character went undercover as a pregnant lady. Is anyone gonna buy it? I mean, do I look pregnant? I mean, I guess I can see it. The day my son was born also ended up being the day that we got picked up for our fourth season. So it was like all these weird things tied into like the timing of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And my husband picked up my phone and he was like, you got another season, you have a million texts on your phone. <laughs> your show got picked up. I was like, I have a job, I have a baby and a job. This is the best day ever. <laughs> I think I've always been a little secretly interested in directing. Started like putting the work in of like shadowing, testing my knowledge at work, which was also just fun to see how much I had learned at work, how much was like already in my brain that I didn't know was there. I love being independent. I have to go to the bathroom. Oh, okay, I'll help you. To do it for the first time in this like super loving and supportive environment was incredible. And I'm, I'm so grateful that they gave me the opportunity to go for it. God, when I, I remember when I first started seeing myself on the soap opera, it, it just enhanced all of my insecurities. I get to go to work and act every day, the thing I've always wanted to do, and someone's paying me to do that. I don't want to be the person that misses out on all of the the joy and sort of this moment of all your hard work coming to fruition because because I think my torso is too short. That's the thing too is everybody has their things. I'm gonna try to work really hard on being nicer to myself and not doing this anymore. I don't wanna, all I'm doing is missing moments and missing life. And there's definitely something about having a kid that makes you feel sort of powerful too because you're like oh my god my body did this and I survived it and eventually felt like myself again and when I did feel like myself again I was like oh it's so good to see you again it's it's a journey like anyone and I think you have to find what what works for you to find your version of your best self in the spirit of this interview too you guys I didn't even cover up my grace <laughs> yeah, girl. Hey. Hey.
amazing. Yay, that was fun, you guys. I almost cried like a bunch of times. It was what is it about this room? <laughs>